Hi, my fellow grade 11s and grade 12. Welcome to our lesson 2, which will conclude the content session of analytical geometry. In le lesson 1, we spent about an hour trying to understand what gradient is and the different ways of finding gradient. But I remember that in lesson 1, I spoke about the fact that we will be looking at six concepts, and the first concept was the concept of gradient. Now, we move to number two and the rest in this session. Uh, number two is equation of a line. Equation of a line. Now, generally, we know what the equation of a line should be. The equation of a line is y equals to mx plus c. All right, where x and y would be the coordinates of a known point. Of a known point. Or coordinate of a point. Let's just put it that way. Coordinate of a point. Where m would be our gradient. And then c is known as the y-intercept. And I'm sure we remember what the y-intercept is. That is the point where the graph touches the y-axis. The y-intercept, the point where the graph touches the y-axis. Please note that x and y of a point will lie on the line. I'll explain what I mean here y equals to mx plus c. I'll explain what I mean when I look at a calculation. So if I give you a point x and I want to know whether that point lies on the equation, we will substitute that x and it must be the same value as the y that is given. Don't worry, I'll look at that just in a moment. How do we calculate the equation of a line? Calculating the equation or determining Let's use the word determining the equation of a line. Determining the equation of a line. Requires M and a set of known coordinates X or Y, X and Y. And that's all you need. Okay, let's quickly have a very fast example. Just going to create a line there and say this is negative 1, um, negative 3, and then we have 2, 4. We want to find the equation of the line AB. Your first duty is to get your gradient. So M, A, B is, remember, YA minus YB over XA minus XB. Now, what is the Y value of A? Negative 3. What is the Y value of B? We have minus there and a positive 4. X value of A would be negative 1. And by the way, we expect this gradient to be positive. Have that expectation. Minus, what is the gradient um, X coordinate of B? Um, that would be what? 2. What would this be? Negative 7 over negative 3. And that gives me 7 over 3. It must be positive. Now, that's my first um, responsibility. Now, I could either choose x, a uh, coordinate of A, and coordinate or coordinate of B. Let's work with coordinate of A. There are a few ways to get your equation, but I would like to use this quickly, mx plus c. I do know my y value, so I'm using point A. My y value is negative 3. What is my gradient? 7 over 3. And what is the x value? Negative 1. I need to find c. The rest is just mathematics now, all right? This would give me negative 7 over 3 plus c. And when I move the 7 over 3 over, it becomes a positive. So we have 7 over 3 minus 3. Um, that will give us negative 2 over 3. Let's confirm that quickly. 
Let's confirm. Remember, we're moving the 7 over 3 over. 7 over 3 minus 3, which is 9 over 3. Negative 2 over 3. Therefore, the equation of the line becomes y equals to 7 over 3x minus 2 over 3. And we're done. Even if I use the coordinate of b, I will still get the same answer. Let's show that so that everyone is comfortable with choosing any of the two points, A or B. If I use that of B, okay, I'm just going to um, squeeze this in here. Let's put A here and bring this equation right underneath. Beautiful. Now let's, do, let's use coordinate of B with the same equation. Y equals to what? Mx plus C. What is the y value? 4. What is the air, uh, air gradient? 7 over 3. x value is 2. Okay, that will give us 14. 4 minus 14 over 3. All right, and uh, what will that give us? That will give us actually 12 there. 12 minus that. All right, so you would see that c is still negative 2 over 3. Therefore, y equals to 7 over 3 was x minus 2. This is three marks in every paper, and in your paper too, you will be doing this about four or five times. So that is 15 marks guaranteed in a paper two. This is very, very important. We do the same thing in paper one on the functions. All right. Now, there are other ways of doing that, and I want to show you all possible methods. All possible methods. So we've, we've learned the first one. It's good to know all, and then you choose which one works for you. Ooh, I'm going to need that gradient. There we go. Awesome. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now I have my gradient, right? I can then say... Um, what is my gradient? We know m equals to what? y2 minus y1. That is how we would have calculated gradient. But now, if I want to use this to get the equation of a line, this is what I am going to do. I am just going to leave my y there, all right? Or sometimes you will see the equation on the formula page when you get to grade 12, is written y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. Okay, let's let's use that. Let's use that. It's the, uh, why? What's going on? It's actually the same thing. All right, y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. Remember, it is the same as saying y minus y1 over x minus x1. These two are actually the same. You can see the math there. All right. So y minus y1, m, x minus x1. I'm going to leave my y. Let's use the coordinate of a minus. What is the x value? Uh, what is the y value of a? I'm using the coordinate of a. It is negative 3. m is 7 over 3. Leave your x minus. What is the x value? It is negative 1. Okay, let's just block bracket there. Now let's simplify. So I left my y and x but substituted the y1 and the x1 as the coordinate of a. So y plus 3, if I expand this bracket, 7 over 3x, negative, negative, that gives me positive, right? Which means I have plus 7 over 3 when I multiply that in. Negative, negative, positive times 7 over 3. Now what happens? Move the 3 over. Plus 7 over 3 minus 3. This gives you straight 7 over 3x minus 2 over 3. So, another way. It's basically the same thing, but just uh, working it out in a different fashion. So, it's important that you know those things. All right. Okay. Now... Check this. Prove that, prove that B, 2, and 4 
lies on the line y equals to 7 over 3x minus 2 over 3. We want to prove that b lies on that point. This is what we are going to do. I am going to substitute the value of x that I'm given. All right, 7 over 3. What's the value of x? 2. And I'm going to work out the value of y. So that is 14 over 3 minus 2 over 3. 14 minus 12. Uh, 14 minus 2 will be 12. So I have 12 over 3, which is 4. Y is equal to 4. Oh, check. Do you notice that? Oh, beautiful. Since the y value is 4 and I'm given as 4, we have actually shown that the point B. So therefore, B, 2, and 4 lies on the line. So I substituted the x value and it's the same as the y value that I was given. And that's it. Equation of a line is done. Can we go on to the next point? So we've done the equation of a line. Gradient and any set of coordinate that you are given would always work for you. All right, we want to run quickly. I don't want it to be a very long um, session. Next one is distance or the length. Distance or the length. So you would either see the word distance or you would see the word length. Now, there's a formula here that you must know. Distance between two points can be represented as x2 minus x1 squared plus. And all you are doing is just throwing in the formulas, throwing the coordinates. And that's it. We are done. This has no, um, this has no, what would I say? Has no magic. All right. A, B. You have negative 1, negative 3, and you have 2 and 4. Let's keep that coordinate. Lovely. Now, what is A, B? The square root of, I am going to now use X, A minus x b take note it's a minus there then we add y a minus y b R write the formula first the reason i like my a and b is to help me keep my coordinates all right what is the x value of a negative one minus what is the x value of b two squared plus what is the y value of um a negative three minus what is the y value of b? 4 squared. You throw that in a calculator and you get the length. That would be 3 squared, 9, um, 7 squared, 49. All right. And then we throw that in a calculator and get an answer. Let's get that quickly. Okay. Now let's get our answer. Um, so just type it the way it is, all right? Put your bracket, negative 1, negative 2, that will, and the square, that gives you your 9, plus you have um, negative 3. Remember, please be careful, especially when you see negative, negative. So YA is minus 3, minus uh, YB is 4. Be careful of that negative, negative. And, okay, why am I getting, uh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Why is it giving me an error there? Okay, I think this is where I have, yeah. Let me fix this. It's a minus. There we go. Root of 58. Root 58. And we're done there. Simple as that. Simple as that. Now, quickly, horizontal line. We spoke about horizontal line. When you have a horizontal line, how do you know a line is horizontal? Please check. The y values will be the same. All right. The y value of A 
is the same as the y value of b the y value of a would be let me try to do that on a cartesian plane okay so if i were to draw a horizontal line there you would see that it is cutting at negative 2 it means the y value of both ends is the same the only difference is the x values i hope that makes sense so how do i get horizontal length um, length would simply be equal to the right value of x right x minus left x and you are done this saves your time because it's just the length there is no need to use the equation of a line you're just because your y a minus y b already gives you what a zero okay so y a is equal to y b we got to be smart the right value right x minus left x and we're done what about a vertical line a vertical line okay now a vertical line will then look like this what are we saying the x value of a is the same as okay let's write a b there a and b we are saying the x value of a is the same as the x value of b therefore the length would simply be equal to top y value minus bottom y value this makes life very easy it's going to give you the exact same answer as the distance because the x and the x would give you a zero and zero squared would be zero this is how to calculate the distance or length between two points this whole concept will come together when we look at properties of parallelogram we must know them number four midpoint and this is also m but please take note it's a capital m and here's your formula it's basically the halfway x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2 please take note of these keywords that we are using because we are going to need them when i round up the whole session lovely m capital m x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 over 2 so if i have a and b there negative 1 negative 3 2 and 4 if i have the midpoint m what will it be so the midpoint m would be x a plus x b over 2 y a remember i like to do this so that i don't mix my x and y all right what would i have what's the x value of a negative one x value of b plus two over two what is the y value of a minus three plus the y value of b four over two and what will this give us two minus one would give me one so i have a half and four minus three. Oh, it's actually a half and a half lovely done we just throw in the coordinate and we calculate it application is what is key now i want to do something quickly and this is where um, from experience i see learners struggling i'm going to do the exact same question but i'm going to walk around something else check this I am now given negative 1 and negative 3 and I'm given half and half and I'm told that this line is equal to that line that takes me to Euclidean geometry again line drawn from center you see bisect a point that is perpendicular will bisect a point I am given that because M is the midpoint so AM is equal to NB I am now required to get this. Learners always struggle with this. Please look at what I'm going to do. I am given the midpoint, right? Which is XA plus XB over 2 and YA plus YB over 2. But what are those coordinates? I see it's given as half 
and half. What that simply means is this is equal to that and that is equal to that. Oh, lovely. So XA plus XB over 2 is equal to 1 over 2. That is what it means. Now, what is the X value of A? Negative 1. Do I know the X value of B? No. Over 2. Check. You can cross multiply, but if you know your maths, you can actually see that since the denominators on both sides are the same, my numerator would be the same. It means that um, my XB will therefore be... All right. Um, you can cross multiply, guys. Um, if we cross multiply, let's do the cross multiplication thing just to make sure that we cover that particular principle so that we don't get confused. All right. So I'm going to cross multiply um, and say... This is what I'd like to do. 2 into bracket negative 1 plus xb. All right, 2 times 1 wouldn't give me what? 2. If I then divide both sides by 2, I'll have 1. So negative 1. This is not necessary in this particular case, but it is necessary as a math concept. All right, therefore, the x value of b is 2 because I'm going to move the negative 1 over. I hope that makes sense. If I lost you there, let me find you here. YA plus YB over 2. We know the value of the midpoint, half. What is the Y value of A? Negative 3. But I do not know the Y value of B over 2. All right, like I said, because the denominators are the same in this case, I could just equate the numerator. However, what do we do when the denominators are not the same? We cross multiply. So 2... Let me do this in a different way. 2 times negative 3, negative 6, just to show and cover all principles of math. Now, 2yb, move the 6 over, 2 plus 6. 2yb would be equal to 8. What is the y value of b? And that would be 4. So I know the value of b now. What is my x value? 2 and the y value, 4. Please take note of the switching principle when you are given gradient and you are required to calculate um, the other end don't mix the midpoint and the point on the terminal together this is number four i told you these things are just um very very straightforward uh is that that's number four N midpoint now let me write this in capital letter midpoint now number five point of intersection point of intersection that is the point where two lines meet each other point where two lines meet each other all right point where two lines meet each other. No, not meet for food. Looks as if I'm hungry now. Meet or touch each other. And what we usually do here is we equate their equations. equations equations which is saying we solve simultaneously and that's it we solve simultaneously so if I have two points that are touching two lines that are touching each other and I need to get the coordinate of both points all I need to do is to solve simultaneously. I'm going to take you back to a question we did in lesson one. If you remember that session. So I'm going to do a whole lot of things that we've been doing. All right. These two lines are parallel, that and that. And we said this is a parallelogram, A, B, C, and D. If you remember, we have this as negative one, negative four. We have this as three and five. 
Okay, D is 4. Now, the question is, what is the coordinate of C? That's what we don't know. But what I see right now is that C is a point of intersection between BC and DC. So basically, I'm looking at this line and that line. I therefore need to get the equation of those two lines. Now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to revise everything I've done so far. For me to get the equation of BC, I need the gradient. But I do not know the gradient. Okay, now let's find the gradient. So we said uh, the gradient of BC, M, B, C, is actually no, equal to gradient of AD. Why is that so? Because BC is parallel. We looked at this to AD. So we have the coordinates of A and D. So I can use that quickly. YA minus yd over xa minus xd what is the y value of a negative 4 minus what is the y value of d negative 2 over remember our answer should be positive what is the x value of a negative 1 minus and what is the x value of d 4 this would give us uh, negative 2 over negative 5, which is 2 over 5. So already I have the gradient of BC. Now I can get the equation of BC. We said y equals to mx plus c. I am using, coord I am using the coordinate of B. What is the y value of B? 5. What is the gradient? Remember, if the gradient here is 2 over 5, the gradient here is also what? 2 over 5. Sweet. Okay, 2 over 5, uh, we know our x value. Our x value is 3 plus what? C. Now, what is the value of C? That is um, 6 of 5 minus uh, 6 over 5. Okay, just use your own calculator. Uh, 5 minus 6 over 5 which is, uh, we have 5 minus 6 over 5, and that will give me 25 minus 6, and that will be 15 over 5. Isn't that 3? All right. Uh, 21, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. 21 minus 6. Okay, let's use a calculator quickly. 5 minus, um, what did we say? 6 over 5. 19 over 5. Yeah, I knew I was doing something wrong there. 19 over 5. Okay, so I have my equation as y equals to 2 over 5x plus 19 over 5. This is the equation of what? BC. I'm going to do the same to get the equation of DC, knowing that the gradient of A B is the same as the gradient of what? CD, because AB is parallel to what? CD. All right. AB is parallel to CD. Lovely. Now, what do I have? Um, I can get the gradient of AB. YA. I'm just redoing all of this so that it stays in our head, you know? Good. What is the y value of A? The y value of A is negative 4. This is a positive gradient as well. What is the y value of B? 5 over x value of A, negative 1, minus the x value of B. Okay, they both give me negative, so we find uh, negative 9 over negative 4, which is 9 over 4. So I already now know m here is 9 over 4 it means m here is also what 9 over 4 sweet so now can i get the equation of cd using point what d that's the one i know so y equals to mx plus c i'm just going to substitute for space sake what is my y value 
negative 2. Let me write that equation here so that we are not lost. What is our gradient? 9 over 4. What is my x value, by the way? 4. Is it fine? And then we have what? Plus c. The 4 goes there, so c is negative 11. So my equation here is y equals to 9 over 4x. All right? Minus 2 minus 9. Yes, we correct. Negative 11. Now, here is the deal. You can see this is quite long. I now have the equation of the two lines that actually intersect. I now need to solve both of them simultaneously. Let's solve quickly. So 2 over 5x plus 19 over 5. 2, sorry, 2 over 5x plus 19 over 5 should be equal to 9 over 4x minus 11. I'm only equating because they are both equal to y. Okay, so 2 over 5x minus 9 over 4x would be equal to negative 11 minus 19 over 5. Sweet. We can then use a calculator here quickly. Um, what would that give us? 8 minus 45. All right, so 2 over 4. 2 over 5, rather, minus 9. We know this answer because we did it in lesson 1. Negative 37 over 20. Negative 37 over 20x. And what will this give me? I, I think here we should be getting 8. I think we should be getting 8. All right, let's see. Calculator again quickly. Make sure you follow through. Negative 11 minus 19 over 5. Negative 74 over 5. Now what do we do? We divide both sides. So it's negative 74 over 5 divided by negative 37 over 20. What would your answer be? Da, 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 da. Moment of truth. Yeah, I see 2 times 4, 8. Done. Correct. Negative 74 over 5 divided by negative 37 over 20. Check. That answer is 8. Now I can get my y. 2 over 5. I replace that plus 9. I can use any of the two equations. All right, that will give me 16 over 5 plus 19 over 5, which is 35 over 5. Y equals to what? 7. So the coordinate of C is 8. Woo! And this we could have gotten <laughs> with our two marks. If you remember transition, <laughs> let me take you back. It's 8 and 7. If you remember transition, where is my transition? There. We could have gotten that by transition. If you remember, 8 and 7. Gradient by transition. But I did that to be able to show us how to walk through point of intersection. You find the two lines that intersect get your equations and you are done now finally finally uh, it's going to be concept number what now six concept number six this is now application concept number six parallelograms parallelograms we're going to be looking at um, quick uh, properties of parallelograms. This is important because we need this for application. Remember, parallelograms means two sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel.
quickly, let's jump into um, parallelograms. Parallelograms. We're going to start with two sides parallel. Okay, so you have that. We're going to look at different ones. Okay, so I'm given that those two sides are parallel. Those two sides are parallel. A, B, C, and D. Very important is this now. The diagonals. There's a lot of important points there that you and I need to know. All right. Now, the diagonals of a parallelogram will bisect each other. It means this and that would be equal. This and that will be equal where M is the midpoint. Please, that is very key. Uh, let's write some few points here. Opposite, opposite sides are parallel. What does that tell us? That tells us about that tells us about what equal gradients, equal gradients. This is now application. Equal gradients. This is so so important. Opposite sides are equal in length. What does this tell you? This tells you about the distance formula. Diagonals bisect each other. This tells you about the midpoint formula. Mm, this is very nice because M is the midpoint of BD and M. So M is the midpoint of BD, which is also the midpoint of AC. I want to take you back quickly. Um, I want to take you back to that same question that we did. I told you I'm going to do that question over and over again using different methods. I quickly want to do that on this. Check this. <clears throat> All right. I have uh, my point here. Just going to copy that image and take it over to Let's do it on, yeah, let's do it here. We can't just squeeze it in here. There we go. Okay, now I do not need the gradient. I do not need the gradient. So we have, we are told it's a parallelogram. So we can apply the midpoint. We know what our answer is, right? Our answer is 8 and 7. Let's see if we can just make it a bit bigger. You know the diagram, so you can redraw that diagram and the coordinates. Lovely. S check here. Now, if I were to draw the diagonal there and also draw the diagonal, they would meet at that point. And I'll call that point M. Let's find the midpoint using B and D. Okay, midpoint using B and D. X, B, because those are the points that I know. Plus X, D over 2. Y, B plus Y, D over 2. And what will that be? Um, my X is 3. My X, D is 4 over 2. I hope that's making sense. What about YB? 5 plus negative 2 will be just that. Now, what would this give us? 7 over 2. Now we are saying this same midpoint is the midpoint between A and C. If you remember, we did this example. Now we are looking for the terminal point when we know the midpoint. So, please get me now. Um, negative 1 plus x value of c. Okay, so that you would see. I am now working with a and c. Line a, c. X, x, a, all right, plus x, c, 
over 2 should be equal to the midpoint, 7 over 2. Do I know the x value of a? Yes, negative 1. All right, over 2. Mm. Cross multiply, or since the denominators are the same now, I can walk through. Minus 1 plus xc. Remember, I can only do this because my denominators are the same. Check, 8. We're getting the exact same answer we got. So now we have about four ways. Um, YA plus YC over 2. What's that? 3 over 2. What is the Y value of A? Negative 4. What is the Y value of C? We don't know. Over 2. Because the denominators are the same, I can work with the numerator. Otherwise, I would have crossed multiply. Check. YC equals to 7. Coordinate of C, 7 and 8. Wow. That same question, we did it with transition, we did it with gradients, with equation of a line. Now we did it with midpoint, properties of a parallelogram. Okay. So please understand the properties of a parallelogram. Now, the second one I'm going to do quickly is a rhombus. I used to call a rhombus a tilted square. A tilted square. It's also a parallelogram. Okay. But what makes this um, spectacular or special is that, yes, it fulfills the properties of a parallelogram in that those are parallel. But they are not just parallel. The adjacent sides are equal. Sweet. The adjacent sides are equal. Remember, we also have our fun angles here, if you know what I mean. Our fun angles, they play a role where this, all right, is equal to that, the white ones. And this is equal to this, vertically opposite angle. This is equal to that, vertically opposite angle. All right, if I look at this, using alternate, let me show you. Alternate, parallel. Can you see that, right? Lovely. So everything just comes to play when, when we get to analytical. brings all the topics together. And if I look at um, this one, if I'm looking for this angle, I see here, here, and here. This and this are equal. So that's how it works, guys. Let's use a blue. That and that are equal. Obviously, now, what do we know? I'm going, you, if you don't have colors, oh, why is that? that I'm using the highlighter. What you can do as well, if you don't have colors, you can use double. See, I'm using double green here, double green there. Okay, and double white, and that double white. And I'll be done. So, parallel lines will always have your fun angles in play. Okay, a rhombus quickly. Now, what is peculiar about the diagonals of a rhombus? Remember, my sides are equal and parallel. What is peculiar, again with the rhombus, the diagonals bisect, that is equal to that. This is equal to that. And we have that point as M. This is what makes this um, very, very interesting. A, B, C, D. The diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Mm. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other at 90 degrees, mm. which makes what AC is now perpendicular, all right, to what BD. Do you remember that? Therefore, the gradient of AC multiplied by the gradient of BD would be negative 1. AMD. 
B becomes a right angle triangle. Ooh, so many things are coming here. When I see a right angle triangle, remember the theorem of Pythagoras plays a big role. So Katua also comes in. Don't say it's not tricks. No, it's maths. So that is very, very important. Apart from the sides being equal, we know what that means, length, uh, parallel, gradient. This is important. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other at 90 degrees. Please let us take note of that. That is very, very key. And also, um, the diagonal actually bisects the angles. The diagonals bisect the angles. What do I mean? This angle is now equal to that angle. That is key. This angle still. So I have those angles now equal. And also, I have this angle equal to that, which is also equal to this by reason of your alternate angles. Check. Very, very important principle. This is called the application now. Okay. So this makes a rhombus very, very unique. If I go back to a parallelogram, yes, I have the diagonals bisecting, but not at 90 degrees because the sides are different in length. Adjacent sides are different. But here, the adjacent sides are equal. All right? Adjacent sides are equal. Let's just, just put that down. Opposite sides are parallel. And then I'll say um, all sides are equal in length. All sides are equal in length. Beautiful. Please, you must also know for a parallelogram that opposite angles are equal. That is grade 10. Let's just add that to it. Opposite angles are equal. Let me just opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. You would see if you check, if you check here, you, it makes a lot of sense. One green and two whites. One green and two whites. Can you see that? One green, this. So this is equal to that, and that is equal to that. Opposite angles are equal. So we need all of these properties, okay, um, when we answer questions. Let's look at, um, we have about three more to look at. A rectangle. A rectangle. I know it's a common shape, but uh, something unique about it as well. 90 degrees, that's very important. Oh, so I know that the gradients already, are good, product of the gradient are, uh, is equal to negative 1. I have opposite sides parallel, so this is equal to that. That is equal to that. And I have my diagonals again. What is unique about this particular one? Hmm, something unique. Let's call this M. This is equal to this, but that's not all. That same length is equal to that. Oops! The diagonals bisect each other accurately when it comes to a rectangle. All right, um, let's start by saying that um, each angle is 90, each angle is 90 degrees, and that makes the product of their gradient equal to what? Negative 1. So MAB times MAD. Okay, so product of adjacent sides product of adjacent side is equal to product 
of gradient, product of gradient of adjacent sides. Adjacent sides is equal to negative one. The diagonals bisect each other. All right? And are equal in length. Are equal in length. We know the general rules of a parallelogram, so I'm not going to be repeating that. Opposite sides are parallel, gradient, and equal in length. Okay. That is very, very important. So I'm just looking at the unique things now about a rectangle. This is very, very unique. Let's see if we can just put a square right at the bottom. A square. Lovely. This is going to be similar to a rhombus. Okay, so this is a square. This and this are also parallel, but they are all equal in length. Similar properties with a right angle with um, a rectangle in terms of the corners, okay. But there's something beautiful about this one as well. All right, that is equal to that. That again is equal to that, just like that of a rectangle. But here is the deal. This one is 90 degrees. And again, this angle, 90. All right. This one here now will be 45 degrees. Mm, beautiful. And that happens across. So let's write the unique things here. Um, diagonals of a square bisect at 90 degrees and are equal in length. Once I say 90 degrees, you know what that means, right? Product of gradient is negative 1. Okay? What else did we say? Um, diagonals bisect the angles. Bisect the angles. And all other things are now common. So I'm only writing the unique things now. Okay. Whatever is unique about it is what we write. So we have a square and a rectangle. Lovely. Opposite sides, we know all of those are parallel and equal, blah, blah, blah. Just quickly running through two more. Trapezium. Trapezium, or people say trapezium, whichever one. Trape, trape, trapezium. Actually, sounds nicer. Trapezium. Now, what is the thing about a trapezium? It's a quadrilateral. However, only two side, only two opposite sides are parallel. Not the four right now. All right, only has one pair of opposite sides. So if I have uh, we can then draw our diagonal. What is it about the diagonal? Is there anything unique about the diagonal? We'll find out just now. So I have A, B, C, and D. Okay. Obviously, this angle will be equal to that angle based on alternate. And those, um, that angle is equal to that angle, all right? And... Uh, Let's say the other one, this angle here will also be, uh, put a double, will also be equal to that. Those are the angles that are equal, and we can say that this angle here, vertically opposite what? Angles. All right. What are the key things here? Only one pair of parallel sides. One pair of parallel what? Sides. That talks about the gradient. Please take note. The diagonals do not bisect each other. All right? The diagonals of a trapezium intersect 
but do not bisect. The diagonals intersect. But do not bisect. They intersect, but they do not bisect. Finally, let's look at a kite. Let us look at a kite. Kite also has some very interesting properties. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. All right, the first thing about a kite is adjacent sides are equal. There's nothing parallel on this one. Okay, this side is equal to that side. A, B, C, D. So when I say adjacent sides are equal, we know what that means, right? Let's quickly write that. Adjacent sides are equal in length. Adjacent sides are equal in length. That talks about the distance formula. Okay, that's just one. What about the diagonals? What is interesting about the diagonals of this particular one? Beautiful. Please watch that. The long diagonal bisects the short diagonal. All right? So, and they are perpendicular to each other. The long diagonal bisects the short diagonal and they are perpendicular to each other. perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular to each other. Another important point that all right and remember since I said perpendicular we're talking about the gradient. Let me just write that gradient of AC times the gradient of BD would be equal to what? Negative 1. Let's put, an, let's put M there. And AM in terms of length will be equal to what? MC. Okay. Uh, two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. We already mentioned that. Okay. I want to talk about that angle quickly. All right. One of, the ang one of the diagonals, actually the long diagonal, uh, let's say one of the diagonals bisect the vertex angle. All of these points are important when it comes to analytical geometry because we're talking about parallel lines perpendicular lines and we're talking about um, equal length all of those points are very very important that's um, a kite adjacent sides are equal in length the long diagonal bisects the short diagonal and they are perpendicular so take note of this keyword the keywords are length bisect and perpendicular. All right. Oh, no. The way I did this, this, there's a problem here. Please put a third stroke here because that means something different now. So those two are equal. All right. So this is where we're going to end the properties of parallelogram. We have actually concluded the content of analytical geometry. What we have to do now is to play around with activities. These two lessons have actually dealt with enough content. Please master these contents. They move from one topic to another, but it helps to understand analytical geometry, especially the properties 
of a parallelogram. We are going to see these shapes cropping up in our questions. All right, that's a triangle there. Okay. Um, you have a triangle again, and then they'll talk about a parallelogram. Do you see that right? But let me quickly end this session with one more thing that we did in grid nine. And I'll be ending that right now. Midpoint theorem. Midpoint theorem. So we have a triangle. All right. We have a triangle. And we have a line passing through the midpoint. Okay, so I'm going to call this A, B, C, D, and E, where this line, again, parallel. You see, those are key things. And we're talking about midpoint. So this is equal to that. Automatically, this would be equal to that. So here is what the midpoint theorem says. Um, a line drawn from the midpoint of one side of a triangle I'll use uh, that parallel to the second side so you see the, the keyword there we've actually talked about two keywords drawn from the midpoint parallel to the second side will pass through the midpoint will pass through the midpoint of the third side all right and its length is half the length of the parallel line. I'll tell you what I mean by that. Okay, I wanted to, we're going to circle all the things we spoke about, midpoint and length. So we're saying DE is going to be half of BC. And all you need to write in the exam would be midpoint theorem. So take note of that. AD is half, D is the midpoint. Let's put a note for ourselves there. Midpoint. So if I draw a line from the midpoint of one side and the line is parallel to the second side, it will definitely pass through the midpoint of the third line and it will be half, all right? Its length is half the length of the parallel what? line. DE is going to be half of BC. That is midpoint theorem. Look at all the things, midpoint parallel, midpoint length. So we've brought in a few concepts again, a few keywords. And yep, this will mark the end. This we need from, it's grid nine. We need it again in grade 11 and then more we need it in grade 12 euclidean geometry all right guys i hope the session has been worth your time oh this is content delivered systematically all right make sure you write the note post the video go through again listen over and over again get all the points know the points go through your note make notes for yourself find ways of remembering the concept then we will start looking at questions in our next activity, in our next session. All right, that is lesson two. Take care and goodbye, everybody.